Hello, everyone. My apologies uh, for that slight delay. So we are back. We are running. <laughs> and we'll just catch up uh, where we left off. So uh, for today's session, audience webcams and mics are turned off, but you will be able to see and hear us and see this lovely presentation. If you have any questions throughout the session, please submit it with the questions feature. And to open that, you're going to click the question mark, type your question and send it in. Following the presentation, we will have a live Q&A from the questions submitted. And we will try our best to get through all of the submitted questions within the session time. If you have any questions after the session, we recommend you email myfuture at fanshawec.ca or book an appointment with one of our Fanshawe College recruiters. If you do have multiple programs open and running right now, it might compromise your webinar experience. We recommend you take a moment now to close any open programs before we begin today's session. I'm now going to introduce Rob Murison and Greg Van Backel, who will be speaking um, on the session today. So I'm going to pass it over to Rob first uh, for his presentation, and I will be, yeah, be back, excuse me, for the live Q&A. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So for my portion of the, the presentation, um, I am dealing with three different programs, uh, carpentry and renovation techniques, carpentry and renovation technician, and building renovation technology. So I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes and just go through each program, uh, what a graduate from that program would look like, opportunities uh, for graduates of that program, and then I'm gonna just take a look at the individual courses that are, are involved in, in each level of the program and just talk a bit about how they, the different years interact with each other. Uh, so a quick introduction on myself. My name is Rob Mearson. I'm a coordinator and a professor within the program. Uh, and again, we have a one, one, two, or three-year offering. And we have a, a core of instructors that, uh, that take care of all three of those levels of program or, or three different years. So we'll start off with the techniques program. So our carpentry and renovation techniques is a one-year college certificate program. And when I say one year, it's in fact eight months. Uh, so your level one or semester one would be September through the end of December and then January uh, through sort of mid-April. So a graduate from our one-year program is basically prepared to be a safe and productive worker or member on a residential carpentry and renovation job site. So they get the basics with respect to safety, um, tool use and equipment layout of um, floors and walls. So basically frame construction from pre-construction through to uh, roof framing. Uh, obviously the basics of the physical construction and we spend uh, about 10 hours a week hands-on in the labs doing the actual work uh, and then about 11 hours a week in the, in the classroom covering the theory to prepare us to, to be in the shop. Uh, and they also get a bit of an exposure to blueprint reading uh, and drafting. So the techniques programs are really good to get your foot in the door in the industry. Uh, if you're kind of unsure, you know, maybe you want to take carpentry, maybe you want to take plumbing, maybe you want to take electrical. The one-year programs are a really nice sort of snapshot of, of what that, that field is all about. Plus, you leave with a credential having that one-year certificate, so it's it's by no means a, a time wasted. Uh, the two-year program is Carpentry and Renovation Technician, and this is a two-year college diploma. Within this program, uh, so the first year or the, the the first year is common within all programs, so they would get the same experience as someone who took the Techniques program. In the second year, they'll come back. And I sort of say they have enhanced knowledge of uh, construction and related trades. So we dig a little deeper into things. Um, they t do some interior and exterior finish. So we still have kind of that five to 10 hours a week in the shop, hands on learning new things and, and actually applying new things. 
will get some exposure to other areas of construction. So they get exposure to mechanical, plumbing, and HVAC. Now, it's only a few hours a week. We can't make you a plumber or make you an electrician in that period of time, but you get an understanding for those sub-trades so that if you are on a job site and those trades are there or you're supervising a site, you have knowledge about what they're doing and, and can help you know, problem solve or you know, help with interactions between the, the different trades. This the, the two-year portion of the program also gives them some exposure to the management side of construction. So we, we have some courses around construction administration or management, which gets into some property development, uh, gets into some scheduling. Uh, we look at the basics of small business operation. So this allows a graduate from this level to be, I say they're more promotable uh, for a leadership role because they understand more than just how to complete the task, but they understand the business side of things a little bit. So uh, they'd be better in a management role, uh, whether that's managing a crew, managing an entire site or multiple sites. Uh, it also sets them up with the basics for small business ownership. So every year we get a couple of graduates from our two-year program that go right into small business ownership. And, uh, and we've had some real success stories with, with that as well. Uh, they also get into some computer design to build on the uh, drafting that they took in the previous year and some advanced tool use and some exposure to some, to some different tools. So that's the two-year program. The three-year program continues to build on that um, administrative or management side. So this is called Building Renovation Technology. It's a three-year advanced diploma. In the third year of the program, there's no more hands-on component. There's no more shop component. It's really focused on, on the management or business side. So um, a graduate from this program or from the third year uh, is further prepared for residential construction site management and or small business ownership. Uh, where this program came from, it's, it's a new, newly developed program. Uh, it came from our residential builders that we meet with each year saying, we want people that are, are geared for and trained for site management um, and, and have, that, have some of that background coming in right off the bat. So this program was, was born from industry feedback and, uh, and we just actually have our first class entering into the third year this year. So it's, uh, it's exciting. We also put more of a focus on green building. Uh, it is a, it is weaved into our entire program but in the third year we we have a course um, that's specifically geared to, to residential green energy so in the third year students will get into um, things like financial and hr management uh, construction site management is a major component so scheduling and organizing uh, residential energy management so the green side of building uh, they will take some autocad design courses again just so they're familiar with that aspect of the industry and business plan development. So there is an entrepreneurship class uh, that's part of the program where they will develop a fully functioning business plan um, from start to finish and it'll basically be ready to uh, present to a bank or to, to possible lenders or partners in the in the starting of a, of a small business. So the way that our programs are structured um, you can see the, the table that I've got on the screen here. Uh, you can see that on the far left, you've got CRQ, which is Carpentry and Renovation Techniques, uh, the Technician or CRT in the middle, and BRY, the Building Renovation on the right. So when students come to Fanshawe for any of these programs, whether you're into the CRQ, CRT, or BRY, the first year is consistent for everybody. So everybody takes all of those courses that are listed in level one and level two. And again, they consist of about 10 hours a week of practical hands-on lab activities and 10 to 11 hours a week of the academic training that gets them ready for that, that in-shop experience. If you just take the, the CRQ or the one level program, you're done after level two. If you were to proceed to the CRT or the two-year program, then in that first gray band or the, the summer there is a co-op. So the one-year program does not have a co-op, the two and the three-year programs do. Uh, so one-year program, 
we come in, we do level one, we do level two, and we graduate. If you were coming into the two-year program, you do level one, level two, uh, and then a four-month co-op in the summer, so running May through the end of August. And then you come back academically for level three and level four. After you've completed level three and level four, you have one more co-op opportunity. And again, it's a four-month co-op from May through September, uh, or end of August, excuse me, after your academics are done. So the nice part about this co-op is that really in, in most cases, it's leading into full-time jobs. So you do you're a co-op student and September 1st, uh, you're, you, if you're successful and stay on, then you, you have your full-time job. For the three-year program, um, things change a little bit after level four. So you would do levels one through four, um, consistent to the, the two-year program. And then you would have the opportunity for an eight-month co-op. So it would run from May through till the end of December. Uh, you would come back and level five runs in the winter term. So January uh, through April. And then level six runs in the summer. And level six is going to be a hybrid semester. So it's going to be partially on, well, right now it's all online, but um, that's just the, what we're working with right now. But in the future, um, it was planned to be partially online and partially face-to-face. -face. And the goal here is that students are working full-time while they're, they're finishing up level six, and that some of the things that they're doing at work or projects that they may be working on are going to um, be used for some of their classroom activities as well. And uh, we've got some real good buy-in from the industry on that in terms of having people involved in both school and job site activities and management activities at the, at the same time. The other really nice thing about the way that the program is set up because the levels are common within programs is there's different exit points. Um, if you were signed up for the two-year program and you got to the end of level two and you said, you know what, I, I really, I, I've got what I think I need, I wanna go out and work, then you can graduate after one year with a certificate. You know, you may have signed up for the one year certificate and said, I really like this, I wanna stick with it. Then we can bump you over into the two or the three year program. So it, it, there's never time lost in the sense that whether you choose to do one, two or three, there's a credential at the end of, of each level or at the end of each year, there's a credential available to you. So it really gives you some, some good flexibility uh, in that respect. On the chart here, it's got listed out um, all of the course titles uh, of the different courses within the program. Uh, I'm not gonna take the time to go through all of the courses. It, it would you know, be eat up most of our presentation time. Uh, but what I will suggest to you is if you go onto the website and look at the individual courses, there's a good uh, write-up or course description of, of what's involved in each class. And that'll give you a good idea of what the flow is through the years and, and kind of the evolution of the courses and, and how the programs kind of change from that one year program, which is all sort of basics and hands on uh, until you get to the you know two and three year program that are more involved with the uh, administration and, and business side of things. So uh, it really does give a good um, broad education in the field of, of carpentry and renovation um, and then some good uh, variety when it comes to some of the, the less hands-on stuff and, and more kind of business related. Um, so program locations, this program is offered uh, on the main campus in London uh, where we run the, the one, two and three year program uh, out of that campus. And if you have any, any further questions, there's um, the uh, Fanshawe email on the bottom here and, and any of those questions that are specific to the program will get directed to me. Um, my, pro, my email is on this slide uh, as well as it's, it's easily accessible on the website where the, if you look up any of those three programs, um, my contact information will, will come up. Uh, so what I'm going to we'll do next here is I'm going to pass things over to Greg and he's going to talk about plumbing and then at the end of his presentation then we'll be open to questions on any of the programs or any of the information that uh, that you guys have, have seen today.
Rob, can you see my screen there now? Uh, it's, I can see your connect to go webinar screen. Hi, Greg. When you click your drop down, are you uh, choosing your slides um, or your yeah, screen that is showing your slides? Um, just give me one second here. And I am the presenter, correct? Yes, you are. And no one can see your screen. Click here to start sharing screen. So if when you, you get that, click the drop down and then it allows you to pick like monitor two. And then I just had my presentation up on my second monitor. Okay. So under that play button and sharing, there's a, a little screen drop down and then you should be able to Perfect. click the correct sharing screen. and then, whoops. There we go. Okay, now you should be able to see it. We, yes. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. You're in. Make your way. Done, everybody. <laughs> I've already done this once today. You think I'd have it figured out? Uh, okay, so uh, I'll just do a quick introduction. I'm with the plumbing program at Fanshawe College, um, and we have two different programs that uh, I'll talk about. Um, so, my name is Greg Van Bakel. Uh, I'm coordinator and professor at uh, both the plumbing and apprenticeship and plumbing techniques programs. Um, I'm also the chair of our, uh, it's what's called curriculum development advisory committee for all the colleges in Ontario um, through plumbing apprenticeship. And we interact with the techniques programs also. And then uh, the, I'm a member of the OWWA board and I, Jack course at Fanshawe College, which is the Ontario Waterworks Association. Um, so lots of lots of programs to look after and to uh, talk about here. So a couple of things. I'm going to go and discuss the differences between the techniques and apprenticeship, okay? And I know we get a lot of questions that comes up with apprenticeship, and some of this will apply uh, with a carpentry apprenticeship also. So when I go through the apprenticeship stuff, Carpentry and plumbing are pretty much the same when it comes to hours and schooling and all that stuff. So um, I put two links up here uh, for you guys to view in one of the techniques. When you pull up Fantanshaw College Plumbing Techniques, all your costs, your courses, um, your, your tuition, all stuff is all listed in there. It gives you an overview of the program, the different types of courses that are in there. So um, Feel free to take a look at that and uh, same as up there with apprenticeship just I'll explain how apprenticeship works because it's a little bit different so one thing I uh, you know I talk to people about is as a plumber we don't just fix toilets and I like to think that we're a lot more broad in our industry so I threw some pictures up here just you know to catch your interest too is you know, we don't even, we're not always doing housing. Uh, you know, we're into commercial areas. Uh, I got a picture of a parking garage, commercial bathrooms, and then, you know, steam coils, heat exchangers uh, into the industrial side. Uh, a lot more hydronics now uh, involved in the plumbing trade and cooling, heating and cooling. Um, and then obviously, you know, you take a look at some of the fixtures that we're getting into today when it comes to the bathroom styles, kitchen styles. Um, it, there's some pretty cool stuff out there. So um, I'll talk about the techniques first. And the way the techniques works is like Rob's uh, first year program or one year program with uh, carpentry is that this is a one year college certificate. And the idea is that, hey, we're giving you the basics. We're gonna let you learn from this. And it kind of gives you a leg up when you wanna get an apprenticeship down the road. Um, so what we go through is we kind of go through like the tools, the machines that we have inside, you know, uh, all the power tools, all the hand tools, all the uh, threaders, the groovers, um, press tools that we're using on copper and stuff like that. Now um, we get into a lot of health and safety just to make sure that everything's following the rules, being safe out there, uh, especially in the shop. It's, it's pretty wild. You know, we have to follow probably most of the uh, protocols to our shops you know for PPE with hard hat safety glasses work boots and now masks 
um, an introduction to the broad area of plumbing and things. so that's what I was saying there before just showing some of those pictures is that uh, we don't just want the students to show up and glue an ABS fitting and they're done we want them trying the new technology learning the new technology so that they have an understanding when they go out in the field and then and then using those different projects to show so we may rough in a basement and then we may do a copper project and then we may do a black pipe project and then we'll switch things up and we'll set some faucets and so on and so forth. So you get a lot of that hands-on stuff um, also. So I'll just kind of go through the way it works. It's a it's, it's a one certificate. So basically Rob said it's eight months. So you go September to December and then kind of January to March, April. Um, and in your first semester, what you'll have is your courses will be uh, five hours of plumbing theory. Uh, four hours of tools and piping methods, so that's in the actual shop, and uh, trade documentation, which is three hours, which is blueprinting, so learning symbols, learning, identifying, and then being able to draw those also, and design. Uh, trade calculations, which is math, so we get a lot into more um, offsets, grading pipes, that kind of stuff. We Keep in mind, when it comes to math, we start uh, right at the basics and work our way up. Uh, I always feel, you know, you can't you can't put a roof on a house if you don't have the foundation set there for it. So uh, we like to start and work our way up. Uh, we have welding, and then we also have construction, health, and safety uh, in semester one. So when we go to semester two uh, after Christmas or the new year, um, we carry on with our five theory, uh, and then we're in the shop for four hours. Uh, doing the tools and piping method and then we still have our trade documentation which is blueprint trade calculations which which is math and then we have two different courses where we have computer applications and computer applications kind of the the way things are going in the industry right now too is uh, you know we got to send emails we got to send texts right away we got to we got to get this PDF document sent off. Well, that's kind of the way things are rolling too. So then we tried to bring in the computer applications just to say, hey, you, we want you to learn Microsoft, we want you to learn Excel, PowerPoint, and uh, Word. And what we end up doing is putting together a little presentation where you've used all those documents to send to a customer a job, you're gonna bid a job or something like that. Okay, so it's just kind of a neat way to upgrade computer skills too. Uh, and then the last one, communications part of it. And the communications part, um, basically, it's like we're trying to give you a resume. We're trying to teach you how to deal with customers, those types of things. So a uh, good little starter just for when you're ready to go and put your resume out there and uh, go for an apprenticeship or whatever you're going to do afterwards. Okay. So now I'll kind of gear towards the apprenticeship side a little more and this will fall under uh, most apprenticeships uh, the way they work but what happens is I got a little flow chart up here and if you look at the start button over there or the start as it is that's where you decide on kind of what you want to do this is the ultimate goal okay then you're going to try and find an employer and this is the toughest part is that uh, people always ask, well, how do I find that employer? Well, you're going to have to put out resumes. You may have to knock on some doors. It's a little harder now with COVID. Um, word of mouth, talk to people. Um, but really, when it comes to an apprenticeship, you don't come to school until you've been working for almost a year and a half, two years. Okay, so you need to find that employer. And then when that employer takes you on as an employee, then you get to the point where you say, okay, I'm in a plumbing company now. I would like to be signed up as an apprentice. Or the employer says that to you. So then they bring the ministry in and you kind of sign like a three-way contract between the, the three as the, the employee and uh, the ministry. Once you've signed that contract that says, okay, you're going to do your 9,000 hours total for your basically five years of your uh, to complete your apprenticeship. So then we uh, go to on-the-job training. So that's working the whole time throughout. Then the ministry will send a letter to either your employer or yourself or both 
and say, uh, hey, you're ready to go to school. So then the employer and the employee will say, okay, you're ready to go to school. That's when you go to level one. So level one basically is, is a program of apprenticeship and it's condensed into two months. And uh, instead of doing like 21 hours, 22 hours, like we do in weeks, uh, you're 30 hours a week uh, for two months. So it's, it's cram everything in, get it going, get back on the tools. So in two weeks, then you go back on the tools or in the field, I'll say, for uh, probably another year to a year and a half, then you'll come back for a level two. You'll take the level two training Okay, which is more into the commercial side of it, where level one was more into the residential side. You'll take that two months of training, then you'll go back uh, on the tools again out in the field uh, for another year and a half. And then when you're getting close to your 9,000 hours, you're going to come back for your level three training. And your level three training, when it comes to plumbing, is more geared towards the industrial side and you know septic systems and pumps and that kind of stuff. Um, but level three is actually nine weeks instead of eight weeks because there's what's uh, called an exam prep week added on to the end. So when you do your eight training, that extra week is a whole extra week just to guide you and get you ready for that red seal. Uh, it's like your provincial exam, which is red seal, so which means it's good for across Canada. So once you pass level three, you can go for your, uh, you'll get your apprenticeship certificate and then you'll go for your certificate of qualification exam. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once you pass that, uh, you become a journey person and you're able to go where you want throughout Canada. So that's kind of uh, it's kind of the pathway through it. I'll just walk through a couple more things and just explain. So I, I threw up another one here where it just talks about who's involved and how it works. Um, but like I said, you work a year, you go to school for eight weeks. You work another year, you go to school for eight weeks. You work another year, you go to school for eight weeks. You do your exam prep and you write your CFQ and then you're out in the workforce as a journey person. So one thing with apprenticeship is uh, there are a lot of grants out there right now uh, to keep apprentices going, to keep them in it um, and provincial. Uh, the nice part about when you come to apprenticeship schooling is that you get to collect unemployment insurance while you and there's also funding from the ministry for travel or rent if you're from Sudbury or Thunder Bay or wherever. Uh, if you're staying in London and you're going to Fancher College, uh, they'll reimburse you for your rent there. So there's there's lots of incentives going forward to get into uh, you know the apprenticeship system uh so just a little bit more of a breakdown you know if you want just an idea you take your plumbing technique course let's say at fanshaw college and uh you get your one year certificate uh it just kind of gives you that little leg up to get into the apprentice side it also gives you like rob said it's kind of a one year thing so if you're not really keen on the plumbing afterwards you haven't wasted four years of your university the way you want to look at it or talk about it but uh, you can move to a different venue or a different avenue if you would like to but uh, um, then once you hopefully do your techniques program uh, write your resume get it out there you get hired on in a job and then we hope to see you back in a couple of years I actually am teaching a level one group right now and we have four former technique students in our level one apprenticeship class from the from our first years that we started uh, plumbing techniques at Fanshawe. So that's kind of neat to see. Okay, uh, so the short explanation of everything, you have levels, basic, intermediate, and advanced when it comes to apprenticeship. Uh, each level is eight weeks in length, except for level three is now nine, um, with 30 hours plus, and these hours all count towards your apprenticeship also, so it's 270 hours each time you come. Um, you, you do have a tuition fee just for the registration of it if you're a, an apprentice, um, but you're allowed to collect the unemployment insurance while you're there during your training. Um, and there's other financial assistance available. When you get into the trades, uh, if you have kids and there's childcare, uh, the ministry helps um, alleviate some of those costs for you. So just some of the projects that we've been doing in the shop, uh, the one on the left here, 
it's a pipe welding project that uh, when you get into more, you know, cooling systems or heating systems, um, we actually get them to just kind of take all the measurements and go out in the, in the middle of the shop and then they have to bring it back in and put it in place. Um, so it, it's kind of a nice little job for them to do. They're, they're using all their math. Uh, it's pipe fitting. It's a bit with the welders and so on. And then on the right hand side here, this is just kind of a job that I did not too long ago, but um, you know, just different, different systems that are out there. We take this off a well system, you got your pressure tank and um, you know, peroxide injectors and carbon filters and iron filters and softeners and just all the stuff that's out there. Um, it's good to show the students. So like Rob, actually, uh, ops are pretty close to each other, but uh, uh, we're both at uh, main campus and right close to T building is where uh, our plum or T building is our shop. And then uh, whether it's techniques or apprenticeship, our classrooms tend to vary around that area. Uh, we like them to stay around that area. Um, there are times where we have to travel across the college, but for the most part, uh, we're always on main campus, which is a nice portion. So that's uh, that's pretty much all I got. If um, if you guys have any questions, I'll just pull up this next part, and then uh, Julia can help us out here, and we'll help you. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you, Rob and Greg, for providing such insightful information on your programs and apprenticeships at Fanshawe College. So we are now moving on to the live Q&A. If you do have a question and want to ask it, please submit it in the questions feature, and you can open that by clicking the question mark, writing your question, and sending it in. We do have a couple of questions here in the queue, and so we will go through them. Our Q&A is open um, for the rest of the session time. And then if you don't get um, your question answered or think of one later, uh, you can send an email to myfuture at fanshawe.ca, or you can book an appointment with one of our recruiters. There is the URL on the screen, fanshawe.ca slash connect. So our first question here, uh, would you please tell me more about the Women in Carpentry program that we have here at Fanshawe? Okay, um, perfect. I, so the Women in Carpentry, uh, it's not a standalone program, it's an initiative within the program. Um, and it is part of uh, the first year, first year of study. So whether you're um, CRQ, CRT, or BRY, it is something that is available to you, um, available within the program. So the way that the Women in Carpentry Initiative works is there's a couple of different components to it. The first is um, in level one, the two, um, the two lab classes or shop classes that you have, one is five hours, one is six hours in length. Uh, we have a women's only section for that, uh, for those first two courses. Now, it's not mandatory. It's something that you you opt in, opt into. Uh, I've taught it in the past, and and I found it's a it's an excellent experience for a, a couple of reasons. Number one, um, they really get a good sense of community, and and the the students in that section generally form a really tight tight bond. Um, and the biggest thing is teaching female students is very different than teaching male students and they learn in a very different way. Um, so we're really able to, to cater uh, the learning in that section towards the way that that um, female students like to learn. And, and this is something that we've just sort of um, realized over time and there's lots of research in that on it. But um, so that's sort of the, the first level. Um, in the second semester, you're in your shop class again is six hours um, you will be with all of the students who you were in your section first uh, first level so you'll be with all the female students and then we'll fill up the remainder of the section with um, other students from the program there's also a mentorship opportunity in here where we connect with um, women from the industry uh, and they're very active in participating with us and they'll come in and, and speak with uh, the female students and we have had mentorship situations set up in the past and, and oftentimes it's led to um, some job opportunities and, and, uh, and, and definitely some good education from, from people that have, have worked their way um, 
you know, up to, to quite uh, um, substantial positions in the industry and, and they just share a lot about how they got there and, and uh, some of the challenges, but then also a lot of the, the rewards of it. So um, hopefully that, that gives you a, a bit of a rundown and, and answers your question there. Uh, it's been a very popular program and we've gone from the first year we ran it, uh, we had four female students out of a hundred. Uh, and then last year, the last two or three years, we've been between um, 12 and 16. So the, the numbers of, of women getting into the carpentry and innovation trades is definitely growing, which is, which is awesome. Perfect. Thank you. I do have a follow-up question um, to yep. that one. Is um, Are there any scholarships or awards for women coming into the program from grade 12? There... To my knowledge, and I'm not completely well versed on on the entry um, opportunities, so I'm not sure about that. There are definitely um, award opportunities for um, students once they are at Fanshawe. So we have a um, series of about four or five awards that are given out each year. Uh, one of those is specific to uh, a woman in or a female in carpentry, and um, the others aren't specific, but are available to um, anybody in the program. And to be honest, quite often we have um, some of our, our, our women winning more than one award um, each year. So the entry scholarships um, or entry awards, um, Julie, you might know the best route on that. Um, it's not something that we kind of cross paths with that often. Yeah, I would probably um, direct you to join our open house sessions on Saturday. So they are running from 10 until 2 and they're all of our student services. So we do have specific sessions that will be running for financial aid as well as our admissions um, and others. So you could ask that very specific question um, to our admissions team and office of the registrar and they'd be able to list you <laughs> every uh, scholarship opportunity that we have. Perfect. So we do have another question here. Uh, would you recommend doing the one or two year program before finding an employer for an apprenticeship? So um, I, I'm a big fan of the two year program. Um, and in carpentry, um, Greg did a great job of going over the sequence for apprenticeship and, and how it works. And it what Plumbing and carpentry are very similar for that uh, apprenticeship. When you go through for a carpentry apprenticeship, and uh, and again, we have a, a large number of students that do the, the one or the two year and then come back, there will be some overlap and repeat in some of the technical skills that you learn. So the in-shop stuff and, and the framing and the tools and that. So there is a little bit of overlap there. Um, but what you won't get in apprenticeship is the um, the plumbing, the HVAC, the electrical, um, the the sort of management or business side of things. So um, it's strictly geared more to the, the hands-on component of it. So I really suggest the two-year program um, because it does give you that that business and management background that will help you be successful whether you're doing a small business or even if you're you're working for somebody else uh, and i've said to a number of graduates that have come in right out of high school or or if not but they do the two-year program um, they get a two-year college diploma they get a really broad construction in sort of construction management background then they get into an apprenticeship do their their hours in apprenticeship and you know, depending on, on the age of the student coming in, they could be 24 or 25 years old, be a licensed carpenter and have that, that additional background. So um, I would say that the one-year program might help you get a job and get an apprenticeship. Uh, the two-year program is going to do more for you after you get that job and once you become that licensed carpenter. I'll just chime in there for a second too, Rob. Like yep. sometimes when you take those programs, um, so for instance, if you did a, like a co-op in high and you worked with, I, and I'll use the plumbing side of it, uh, yep. you can get credit for some of those hours on your 9,000 hour apprenticeship. So if if you take your two year program in that carpentry, 
you may be able to fast track a few, like some of your hours when you sign up with the ministry, with your contract. Uh, I'll just give you an example. Back when I did my apprenticeship, um, I had done some carpentry and I worked on a farm and they actually granted me five to 600 hours. plus my 500 hours for graduating high school. And that was just because I had a basic understanding of tools and, and the work industry. So uh, to take a program like that, they probably give you some of your hours. So hopefully that answers that. And in the two-year program, if you do, uh, if you if you take advantage of the co-op option, right, and, and you're working within the field, then again, those are hours that, that are work experience hours that'll get you that much further ahead in your apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very helpful to know. So I do have another question here. What is unique about the programs here at Fanshawe College in comparison to other colleges? Do you want to go first or I, me, Greg? I'll answer this. Yeah, right. I'll answer it again. And I, I kind of had the same one on my last. It's a great question. And I think I'll put it to you this way is that uh, we have a good group and we care about what we do and we're always trying to be innovative and creative and uh, new technology and to advance ourselves also. And uh, so that's how it kind of responded the last time was, and you know, I'm a plumber and Rob's a carpenter and you know, get along and we, we hang out every once in a while and you know, we're a pretty tight knit group when it comes to the trades people there, um, but we're always trying to get better. And we're, I'm working on deals right now with certain uh, manufacturers and, and wholesalers to help us with material and help us with new tools and equipment. So when it comes to other institutions, I, I don't know how they run things. I do in a way, but I, I worry about our program and how we can just keep getting better. And so uh, that's the way I look at how we run our plumbing program. And I, I sort of echo that and I, I do, I love that question and it's, it's a, I mean, it's obviously something you want to know. My honest answer is I don't know what other schools do. Um, I don't know necessarily, you know, they might offer the same course, but I don't really know what it looks like. Um, but to, to echo Greg, what I do know is, is my carpentry team is, um, are, are excellent. I've had the same people full-time and part-time for years and, you know, we, we really make an effort to make sure that the different courses tie together. So rarely, if ever, would you sit in a classroom and, and think, you know, why am I learning this? This isn't, isn't going to apply to something else because normally two hours later, you go to your next class and you're thinking, oh, okay, that's why I just learned that in my drawings class because I'm, I'm now reading the blueprints because I'm building the wall. Like it, it connects, um, it really connects together, which I know students appreciate. Um, the other thing that I think sets us apart is, um, you know, our graduates, and, and that's a reflection on us. I still keep in touch with numerous graduates that are, are doing extremely well. And, you know, the, the comment that I love the most is when students come back and say, you know what, you know, you taught me this and I didn't really think much of it at the time. And then, you know, a few years later, I ran into that situation and I knew enough to look it up or I knew what they were talking about. And, and that just tells me that we're hitting the mark and, and we're getting people what they need and whether it's what they need 10 minutes after they graduate or five years after they graduate, um, they're, they're getting the information that they need and the experience. So, and I think we're a pretty likable group. That's why people keep in touch with us and, and, and generally have a, have a, a good experience at college, you know, apart from what they learn. Yeah, I think that's great. <laughs> uh, we do have another question here, um, and this might be, you know, in comparison to how it was versus now times, I will say, but what are the estimated class sizes? So for carpentry, uh, it depends on the class. So any of our classes that take place in a lab setting, um, this year they're right around 17 or 18 students per. Um, we have a pretty hard maximum of 22. So if you're in a shop, you rarely see over 22 students. Um, the other courses that are historically would be theory courses in class, um, which are now theory courses online. 
generally we take the rest of the program. So the first year we typically have about 140 students in first year. That group will be split into three groups. So you'll have approximately 45 in your theory classes. Uh, and then for the second year of the program, we're usually between 60 and 80 students. So uh, again, your shops are gonna be no bigger than, than 22 and your theory classes will be approximately 30 or 40 students. So um, we're in a classroom setting is, is pretty manageable. There's a couple of classes that you might have the whole program at once. Uh, so you may be in a room with, typically in second year, you, you, you might be in a room with all 60 or 80, um, but there's only one or two courses that are, that are like that. Greg? Yeah, and with, pl with plumbing, we are uh, max 44 for plumbing techniques um, in theory, blueprint, math. And when it comes to the shops, maximum 22 in the shop at the same time. Uh, when it comes to apprenticeship, all our apprenticeship for plumbing anyway, um, I believe carpentry is 30 and I believe pl and pl 24. So we have a maximum of 24 total and we actually split those shops. Yep. So. Well, that's very good to know. Okay, so we do have another question here. If someone takes the one-year certificate at another campus, can they transfer to the London campus for the second year? Uh, so when you say other campus, are you assuming other Fanshawe campus or another college? I'll answer both. Yeah, um, they didn't specify. <laughs> okay, so I'll answer both quickly. Um, if the one-year program of the CRQ was offered at another campus of Fanshawe, so let's say it was offered in, in Woodstock, um, it should be just 100% clean transition um, because it is a Fanshawe program. If you took the uh, one-year program at a different college, then you can transfer over to the second year, but there might be some courses to catch up. So essentially over, the, over a two-year program, there are certain government mandated learning outcomes that the program has to meet. How individual colleges choose to meet those can vary. So some might do something in first year that I do in second year. Um, others may be vice versa. So if you were to do that, you would have to meet with me. I would need to see your transcripts, your course descriptions, and I would basically go through and map what have you done and what is it equivalent to at Fanshawe. So in an ideal world, you would be able to take a level three and a level four and then graduate. Uh, depending on where you take the course and, and what courses have been taken, then there may be some extra courses to take here and there. So it, it it's very much possible, but what exactly that workload looks like will depend on on the way that the other college has set that program up. Mm -hmm. And this person did specify through the questions that they did mean Fanshawe. So you did answer okay. both, <laughs> but it was easy. the easier of the two. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That's a lot less work for me too. So Yeah. <laughs> okay. Another question. Uh, if after the one or two year carpentry program, you then decided that you did not want to become a carpenter, but were interested in a plumbing or electrical apprenticeship, would these programs still be beneficial? I, yeah, I say yes. Um, the reason yeah. for that is that, I mean, anything in carpentry, if you ever own a house, then this program is valuable to you. Um, you know, the skills that you pick up in it, you could still do um, some side work on the side. The other part of it is, and, and you know, Greg will probably echo this, if anybody comes into a trade with knowledge of another trade, it just makes them that much more valuable within that trade. Because not only are you understanding what you're doing now in plumbing, but you understand the carpentry side of it. So you're not going to go and cut a massive hole in a floor joist because you understand why that can't happen. So um, I, I am a huge fan of, of people that get some cross training um and a lot of the concepts of the academic stuff like the quantities um any of the business management that's going to be universal to to whatever trade um that you take on so absolutely whether it's a one year or a two year um again the great things about our programs is it's never going to be a waste you know if you um again if you ever own a house or if you ever want to help your family out like it's all valuable stuff 
I, I'm going to echo that, Rob, because I think, you know, you take a house environment where people are building new houses these days, the electricians, the carpenters, the sheet metal, and the plumbers all have to work hand in hand to know what's going through the joists, where they're going up the walls, and so forth. And they're actually a tight knit group, and they they learn from each other to see. And then the next house goes better, and the next job goes better. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just be personally for myself. I want to take a few more cabinet making courses because I like doing that. I'm a plumber, yeah. but I love doing carpentry. I love doing cabinet making. Yeah. Others an electrician. Like you can never have enough, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, when it comes into the trades. So. Perfect. That's good to know. Okay, so we do have a couple more questions here, and I just wanted to remind everyone at the time we have about five minutes left so we'll get through these if any other uh, questions come through uh, we will do our best to answer them within the session so how many students are usually admitted to the carpentry diploma uh it's the so the diploma would be the two years so um general progression in first year overall total i'll start with 140 students um, there's usually 60 to 80 that progress into the two-year program or the CRT, which is the diploma. And then the advanced diploma, um, this year is the first year of it. We have a pretty small group going in, but signed up for the following year. If they all progress through, that group will be around 25 or 30. Um, so, And the drop from 140 to 60 or 80, um, a number of those people graduate just with the one year. Um, and then others just decide that it's not for them. But And is it typically a competitive program at Fanshawe that you will have a lot more applicants than those admitted? No, it is an open program. Um, so as long as you meet the prerequisites, which, which is a uh, college level math, and we suggest college for technology, as long as the program does not fill up, it is open. Uh, if you apply, by the deadline, then you're guaranteed a spot. If you apply after the deadline, then you may get waitlisted. Um, we have actually waitlisted the last three years, uh, but I believe we've cleared the waitlist before the, the semester started. Um, our program has also grown from sort of 80 to 140 in the last five years. So the demand is, is there, but if you apply on time, you will get in. Um, the other sort of loophole is that if you go online late and you see that, let's say the one year and the two year program have waitlisted, go ahead and apply to the three year program. It's all a common first year and you can still, you can move around once you're in the program. Um, we just waitlist them if they fill up quicker than, than the others. We kind of have to try and get the right number of students. I think that's how we got up to 140. So we just kept misguessing, but. <laughs> Um, it, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's open as long as you have the prerequisite, but apply early or else you might be on a wait yeah. list. Perfect. So we have caught up with our questions. We have a couple minutes left. If uh, anyone does have another question and wants to put it in the questions box. Um, but while we wait, is there anything you guys wanted to add about, um, your programs or experience at Fanshawe? Greg, maybe I'll ask, uh, ask I'll, you. Or, sorry. No, go ahead. I, I was just going to ask you for, for your industry, what's what's the demand like? Is there good job opportunities for, for people coming out of plumbing techniques or plumbing apprenticeship? So that's what we were just discussing the other day too. And, uh, you know, I like this work outside of the, a little bit. Um, but talking to these employers out there, they're swamped right now. And the industry just seems super busy and they want to hire good people. So I think I think when you go into these programs, accountability and punctuality are probably the most important things when it comes to getting into the trades. And I know just with our apprenticeship classes, we start at seven o'clock every morning. Uh, we live, you know, that's just part of, how life works and and our career works um and they respect that and uh you know as long as you show up on time willing to work and grab a broom and sweep a floor like yep. there's lots of opportunities out there you just gotta want it right so yep. um and i'll touch on that too like our if you're interested in the plumbing techniques at all 
uh, we are waitlisted. We started this program three years ago, and we've been waitlisted every year. So uh, just make sure when you're applying, apply early. So. Perfect. And you can well, apply to. Sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, you can apply to, if you're not 100% sure what you want to do, you can apply to multiple programs. Um, we do yeah. another open house in March, and at that point is when you can come in and actually decide what you want to do. But you can really keep your, your doors and your options open right until um, usually mid-March or late March is the actual decision deadline. So um, lots of time for that. And Perfect. hopefully we can go back to school by then. Yeah. Great. So we are all caught up on our questions and we have reached the end of our session time. So thank you to all of the students who did submit questions today. We hope you, we have answered all of your questions, but if you do think of any more, please connect with us and our Fanshawe College recruitment team by email. And it is myfuture at fanshawec.ca. It is on the screen or by booking a one-on-one -on -one appointment with our team at fanshawec.ca slash connect. Don't forget to watch your email um, as we'll be sending you some details for the open house activities on Saturday. And like I did mention before, that's where you could talk to uh, financial aid, admissions, um, other student services that we have here on campus. Um, so we are here to answer all of your um, other questions other than program questions on Saturday. So thanks Rob and Greg for taking the time to speak with us today about your program and uh, to everyone else, enjoy the rest of Open House. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks.